What do you like about this class? Well, um, yeah, look, I like I like that uh, we got you know three guys that were great in our top seventy. Um, you know, I like I like the opportunities that we had today. Um, you know, with Alize, uh, Alize Mack and, and Caden Ellis, and, and uh, look, I think we've got some players that can help our team. What do you think the vision is for Ellis? You said you met want him to play multiple positions. Yeah, I, I think at the end of the day, it's it's um, look the, the quickest route for any of these guys. Um, you know, at that position is to contribute on special teams. So until we get here and we've got a vision for these players, and yet how quickly they fulfill the vision, you know, it depends on a large part on them, and, and, and uh, you know, we'll see what happens. Uh, so you had three guys in your, in your top 70? Mm-hmm. So this yep. is like top 70 overall the entire draft board? We had, yeah, on our board, we, we three of our guys that we drafted were in our top 70. Um, was it those? So I mean, was, was that what you were expecting? You guys only had one pick in the first 167 yeah. coming in, or I imagine? Yeah, so we're pleased about that. It was the top three picks, I'm guessing. Yeah. Yes. How did that trade come about with uh, uh, the, the safety from Florida? Uh, yeah, it was uh, look an opportunity. First of all, that the key to that was getting the fourth back when when we made the trade uh, um, to get McCoy. You know, we got a fourth round pick back, and that allowed us some uh, to be in a position to, to move up and, and get uh, and get Chauncey. So um, excited about that. So we trade it up, not down, right? Can you just talk about <laughs> so that? Remember that next year when you're asking me those questions. <laughs> Can you just talk about that general philosophy? I know mean, you've talked about it a bunch, but obviously you don't see anything taboo about giving up future picks or giving picks. It's well, it's calculated, like right? It's it's calculated. And so, um, you know, when you have the opportunity to go get somebody, go get a player that you covet, um, you, go get, you go get them. That, you know, that's been a successful formula for us. Um, I'm not saying it's 100%, but it's a successful formula for us, and I think for a lot of teams. And so if you like the player, go get them. That's, that's our philosophy. So you took two safeties. <coughs> How much of this is special teams focused, or what do you like about yeah, it? Yeah, I, I, you know, I think there's some versatility there. You know, Chauncey with uh, playing nickel and, and – um, you know, we'll see how it all shakes out. But obviously, you know, that's a position where those guys can be core special teams players as well. Sean said you guys thought maybe uh, uh, Eric would be gone uh, by the time the first round even came to a yeah. close. Uh, when he didn't go, like, when did you guys start talking about how you maybe move up to try to get him? He said he uh, right at the end of the first round. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, so uh, he was a target for us and, and – uh, Talked a lot about what we had available to us, what we'd be willing to to spend in terms of the cost to move up, and and uh, made a lot of calls, and and um, you know eventually found a willing partner. When you came in this morning, were you surprised that Chauncey was still yeah. out there? Yes, I would say yes. We were. We, uh, again, last night, you know, we talked a little bit about it, and you know, evaluated the cost to to move, and and um, again, the key to that was getting getting the fourth round pick back um, in the trade for um, quite so. Or how long before well, we actually made the pick? We discussed it amongst ourselves, you know, last night and then came in, you know, uh, in the morning and, and discussed it then and started making a few calls to see who was looking in front of us, who was looking to maybe move down. Um, there were a number of teams that were willing to do that. You know, some, some the, you know, the cost was too great. so. That's, it's just a process, and then you know when you get on the clock and you get close to to, to, your, to their pick or, or our pick, um, if the player's still available, then you know that those those conversations get a little more heated up. But the framework for a deal is already in place. And the trade in the second round, how soon did that <coughs> did you finish that before you pick? Was it was it right before you pick McCoy? Yeah, on the clock. Yeah, on the clock. What? Common traits would you say maybe you know all these guys have? The yeah, I think anything? smart, tough, productive. Um, yeah, I, you know, those 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 are the things that we're looking for. You ever have any interaction with uh, Luther Ellis? 
Uh, well, you know, my, my recollection is, and I, I said this to, to Caden, I think that we made a, a swing at him as a free agent at one point, uh, his dad, um, years ago. That's my, my recollection, and, and uh, it'll come back to me, I think, eventually. But yeah, I think we, we, we I know we had a discussion about being able to acquire him years ago, and um, obviously it didn't happen, but that was a good football player. And uh, that's a good pedigree that he, he comes from. What do you see as some of the advantages or disadvantages of the calculations that go into taking fewer draft picks to get specific guys versus stockpiling draft picks to get a lot of guys? What do you think goes into that? Is it does it depend on how close you are to contending and how close you are to rebuilding? Or no, I think there's I think there's a lot of variables. You know, it starts with maybe philosophy, whether or not you know, look more swings, um, more hits, right? So that's that's one of the philosophies, and, and the other one is is uh, quality quality over quantity at times. So, and I think there's lots of variables involved with that, and I think it changes from year to year. Obviously, the composition of your team um, makes a difference as well. So if you're really strong in a position, um, sometimes you want to build that strength, and sometimes you, you're looking at it like, well, man, can the guy even make our team given? Given uh, you know where our roster is, so I, there, there's a lot of variables, and I think each case is is um, you know is kind of specific to itself. Did, did last year the fact that you didn't have room for all your own draft picks play into that? I mean, do you see this as a roster with fewer openings? Uh, I don't know. I don't know that I would say that um, in terms of last year impacting us. Look, you know, we, we lost some guys that we were hoping to get to the practice squad and be able to continue to develop, and, and we weren't able to do that. Um, I, you know, it's a, I think it's kind of unusual to have that many guys claimed and, and uh, you know, for one team, but it happened. D that didn't impact uh, how we looked well, at I just this meant the, the concept of not having room on a 53-man roster necessarily for, yeah. you know, full draft. Yeah, I mean, obviously that, that comes into your thinking somewhat, and yet, man, there's always there's always a place for a good player. We'll find a place. Mickey, uh, Elise Mack was interesting because I think he was like a, a top recruit, went to Notre Dame, obviously, and then didn't uh, meet his potential for various reasons at Notre Dame. But uh, are you intrigued by prospects like that, knowing how much potential they started with, even, even if the production wasn't Yeah, good. look. Obviously, he was a really highly decorated uh, high school player, and, and um, you know whether he met their expectations or his, that's for someone else to say. But but you know we like the talent, we like the talent, and we like where we got him, and and he'll have an opportunity, and uh, look, he'll get he'll get uh, he'll get every opportunity to succeed here. It's it's so easy to come in here though when when you have a guy that's you know he was team captain, team leader, coach's son, you know like you know all those things. But when when it's a guy that had a you know suspension or academic yeah. or whatever, like how do they have to sell you that you know they're gonna? Yeah, I think you know that's all part of that's all part of you know the information gathering process that we go through um, that we've gone through for the last few months and and. You know, somebody has red flags on them. Um, you know, we've got to get a comfort level for for um, for those red flags. And hey, can, can this be different? Be, um, you know, where are our concerns are they legitimate or they not legitimate? You know, we had a, a thirty visit with Alize and and uh, went well. Obviously, it went well. Otherwise, we wouldn't have taken him. Was there anything particular you liked about his attitude or the way he talked? Uh, about yeah, I think he was he, he was pretty accountable. Um, Talked about how he matured and, uh, and, and and still has room to do that. A lot of these guys uh, talked about their visits, you know, either with coaches uh, on campus or down here. I mean, just would you say the role of coaches in the draft process has sort of been increasing over the years, or I mean, just how, why do you appreciate their input so much? Yeah, I, I, a couple things. I don't. We've always got our coaches involved in the process, and I think part of that is a value. The evaluation, obviously, of the talent, but it's also evaluation of a hey, how well do they learn? How are they going to fit in the room? <coughs> what's the vision? Um, what's the vision for you know a particular player in our scheme? And, and um, 
obviously the guys that are coaching them are, are you know have have uh, uh, a perspective that personnel department doesn't necessarily have. Well, some of the things that made uh, McCoy someone you coveted so much, something yeah. that it was so easily identifiable as. Yeah, I, I think look, he checks all the boxes in terms of uh, uh, productive, tough, smart, all the things that you want in an offensive lineman. Um, he'll fit right into our room. Um, we've got a great uh, O line room, and and uh, he'll fit right in, no question. So he, he checked all the boxes. All right. Well,